Welcome back, everyone. This is Rudy Rodriguez Shomal with another edition of Rudy's Rants. The game with the Indiana Fever and Minnesota Lynx has just ended. The Indiana Fever came from seven down in the fourth quarter to beat the Minnesota Lynx 81-74 on the road. They outscored them 28-14 in the fourth quarter. Defensively, they ratcheted the game up. But before we jump in, remember to like and subscribe. And be sure to comment, follow, and share all of our stuff. We are jumping closer and closer to 2,000 subscribers. And we greatly thank you. Right now, we are at 1,952 subscribers. We are 48 away. So please share our stuff with your friends. Get everyone to jump on board. The Come On Now, the podcast, train. But let's jump right into it. Caitlin Clark for three quarters, played like absolute garbage. She was coming into this game with a five-game double-double streak with points and assists, and you could see early on it was not going to happen. There were a few shots missed on assists of, on, on passes from her, but overall she was just not right. She turned the ball over the first play of the game, and she just wasn't there. She got pulled early, uh, talked to for a minute, but at no point did she really ever look like she was there. She had seven points and four assists at halftime. It was a close game, though, because Aaliyah Boston was balling. And, and on top of that, while Caitlin Clark wasn't playing well, Kelsey Mitchell wasn't playing well. She started off the game four for 13. She struggled incredibly early on and just wasn't, you know, wasn't knocking down open looks um, as a team. They were missing lots of open shots and uh, they weren't getting the push out, the, the, the pace that they usually play at. They weren't getting those push outs that, you know, get um, easy layups. You didn't see much of that today. But man, oh man, what a fourth quarter. Towards the end of the third, I was texting Nick. I was saying they might just want to sit Caitlin Clark in the fourth quarter because she's playing like straight up garbage. And um, he said no. And you know what a big fan of Caitlin Clark I am, but if, if it's not working, don't force it. Don't force the square pig into the round hole. But he said no. You got to you got to put her back out there. I mean, she got taken out late in the third, and they're down seven going into the third, the fourth quarter. And she immediately is back in the game and knocks down a wing three that changes the game. It changed the momentum. It got her back into it mentally. And lo and behold, fourth quarter, she starts the quarter off with seven. She finishes the game with 17 points, six assists, three rebounds, two steals. Yes, she still had six turnovers. But her turnovers did not happen in the fourth quarter. She had zero turnovers in the fourth quarter. But yes, I said it. Caitlin Clark played like absolute garbage for three quarters. She played like garbage. She looked like garbage. And I was ready to come on here and absolutely blast away because of how crappy she was playing if they had not come back in this game. But man, she shut me up in the fourth. She did finish a horrific 5 of 17 from the field. Yes, horrible. 2 of 11 from 3. She was obviously 3 of 6 from 2. She went 5 of 5 from the line. She missed more open threes than I have ever seen her miss. I, I mean, I counted five that were just absolutely wide open shots for her. And she just missed them. She missed one on the wing. She missed a couple top of the key. Yeah, she had a rough, rough day shooting. It was a bad day for her. But Aaliyah Boston balled. 17 points, 16 rebounds, dominating the glass, four block shots. And then Kelsey Mitchell in a three-point game, last possession for Minnesota. So it was a three-point game? Yeah, it was a three-point game, 78. It was a 78, 77, 74. She blocks a shot of a driving Alana Smith, who's going to the rim and blocks her shot. Like you wouldn't, you couldn't even have seen her coming, but she blocks her shot. 
Boston saves the rebound, gets it back to Mitchell, who make, who gets fouled, makes both free throws, puts them up 79-74. Um, man, oh, man, what a fourth-quarter performance by the Indiana Fever. This is a massive win for them. This is their best road win. I do not care that Nafisia Collier wasn't playing. She's important, but this is a road game at a good Minnesota Lynx team who was 16-7 and seven coming in. Yeah, this is a monster, monster win for them. This is as big a win as they've – this might be a bigger win than the, than the New York Liberty win because they were at home against the Liberty. Um, this also was a win against the coach of the Minnesota Lynx who decided that Caitlin Clark wasn't um, an Olympian. You know, uh, yeah, Cheryl Reeve. Cheryl Reeve got to see live and in person – what Caitlin Clark can do to a basketball team when she's put to the test. The fourth quarter that Caitlin Clark played was fantastic. She played a fantastic fourth quarter. She got off on that three. She scores 10 points. She finishes the game with six assists. So she had two assists in the fourth quarter, 10 and two. She was responsible for the first 14 points they scored in the fourth quarter, either on, um, either on uh, scoring herself or assists. What a performance. What a fourth quarter for the Indiana Fever. You know, this team is getting better and better as they play more and more together. There are still major issues off of their bench. They don't have much of a bench. Lexi Hull, you know, I'm saying to Nick on, on, on our text, I said, you can't give up a three coming off of this timeout. And what is it? It was 71, 70, 75, 74 with 202 to go. Coming off of a timeout, he said, you can't give up a three here. You got to force them off the three because that's really all Minnesota could do. You have to force them to dribble the ball, force them to put, them on, put it on the floor. And what happens? Lexi Hull gets caught behind a double screen and gives up a three-point shot, and it's 75-74. On the next possession, Clark drives right down the – right down the, drives to the basket, gets fouled, goes to the line, makes both free throws. And then Minnesota misses two threes in a row off, you know, Contested threes, misses them both. But then this is where you have these things that happen with Indiana. You have the ball. You, this is why Indiana just isn't very good in half-court settings. You have a 24-second clock, like for Christ's sakes. Caitlin Clark dribbles the ball, you know, a bunch. Gets a pass to a wide open, um, I believe it was Samuelson, top of the key. She doesn't shoot the ball. Shoot the ball. There was like six seconds to go on the shot clock. Shoot the ball. Instead, she kicks it to the left. It's kicked right back to her, and they have a 24-second violation. Nonetheless, big-time performance by the Indiana Fever in the fourth quarter. Caitlin Clark, three quarters. You were straight-up doo-doo garbage, but you know what? End of the day, all that matters is a W. Streaks be gone. The streak is over at five. You do not tie the all-time streak at six of Courtney Vanders Vandersloot. There will be other days. But what matters at the end is that you win games. Winning games is all that matters. Winning games is what you play for. It's not for streaks. It's not for records. It's to win basketball games. And now the Indiana Fever are 11 and 14. They play their final game of the first half of the season on Wednesday against the Dallas Wings on the road. The Wings are one of the worst teams in the league, but you can't go to sleep because we saw what happened when Indiana went to sleep against Washington. They lost at home. So instead of being, you know, being uh, 12 and 13 right now, they're 11 and 14 after that loss. But they know they have to come out to play against Dallas on Wednesday. And, and then you have the All-Star break, um, with the All-Star game next Saturday between Team USA and Team WNBA. But, yeah, that's a humongous win for the Indiana Fever. Caitlin Clark has got to – there are situations – Caitlin Clark has got to – I don't want to say she has to relax at times, but I think she was pressing today. I think maybe the streak was in her brain, um, was in her brain today somewhat. I think it was in her brain. Um, maybe she was thinking about it, and maybe it did affect her in the first three quarters. But maybe in the fourth quarter, she just said, "Screw this! I'm trying to win." And you know, I can hold, I hold her to the same standard as anybody else. You you look like you're pressing. You look like you're making you're, you're making mistakes that you don't otherwise make. You're missing shots that you don't otherwise miss. Um, but a lot of I think the Minnesota Lynx did a really good job defensively on her. They did not allow the push out. They did not allow the, the tempo. They did not allow those 
you know, those passes down court where it gets her so many, as you know, easy bucket assists. The, the Fever also did not run the pick and roll top of the key with Aaliyah Boston. They did not run it a lot. And, and that's get, that also gets a lot of assists for Caitlin Clark. So that didn't happen much, but it did happen in the fourth quarter, and they picked up a bucket that way in the fourth quarter. Overall, huge win for the Indiana Fever. Huge, huge win. Big time fourth quarter by that team. Big time fourth quarter by Caitlin Clark after three quarters of absolute freaking dreck. But this is what it's all about: getting a W. Leave a comment in this. Leave a comment in the. You know, leave us a comment and be sure to like, subscribe, and follow it. Follow us at Come On Now Podcast on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Come On Now Pod and X. And be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Come on now.